Hey guys, it's Kelvin from Kelty Arts here. So today we'll be taking a look at how to achieve a procedural edgeware setup using NoteGraph inside Mari. This quick tutorial is aimed at users who already have a basic understanding of the NoteGraph setup. If you're unfamiliar with the NoteGraph setup, there are YouTube videos out there that are that cover this topic for beginners. Uh, I'll show you a few artists that already has some nice tutorials, such as uh, Michael Wild, Meshman Studios. There's a bunch of pretty good tutorials that cover how to do no graph. So jumping back on to Mari. So there'll be two main things you'll need for this setup, which is the Mari 4.8, which they've introduced the big point filter. It's quite essential to this workflow. Because with it, you can finally add tweakable filters similar to Substance Painter. And also, the other thing is Mari Extension Pack. It's a wonderful plugin that was made by Jens, also known as Campy 3D. It's got a lot of one amazing and detailed procedurals and generators inside it. Also has a lot of other stuff like world space gradient, cylindrical projection, a lot of other other useful tools. It's got some grunge leaks, some surface imperfections. There is super useful for hard surface texturing. So moving on. First, I'll, I want to show you the overview of how I set up my node graph. So this section is where I do all the edge wear, which then gets piped into the mask that controls the blending between the steel and the machine paint. So you might, if you're unfamiliar with doing, uh, using the, the new material setup, the multi-channel merge is basically a node that merges two materials together and blend them, blending them using the mass input. So underneath, I have the steel material which came out of the box from Mari, which is pretty decent if you ask me. And the other material is a paint, machine paint material that I created using textures from CG Textures. It's got several parameters that you can tweak, like the smoothness of the paint and you can also tweak the color as you like I'll include it in the gumroad page so you can access it as well So yeah, jumping back onto the material setup. So yeah, I'll show you how to do it from scratch. So you'll need the custom material. So to add a custom material to the shelf is pretty easy. So that's just the shelf icon, and that's how you access it. 
I'll expand it just to show you how it looks like. It's right between the shaders and the snapshot. Bring your folder with the shader and simply just take the file and click it and drag it onto the shelf. And it'll be in your personal tab. It's even got a thumbnail, which is quite similar to the Substance Painter shelf that they have. Kudos to Mari devs for doing this new shelf. It's quite user friendly, to be honest. So yeah, let's drag the machine paint onto the note graph. And also let's look for... So there's a... I'm just gonna drag it over and get more space. So type in steel and the steel metal will co come up. So yeah, you throw on the steel. And preview it by pressing one and just clicking BRDF. It'll think for a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, by itself it looks pretty decent without much tweaking needed and the machine paint and then next hit tab and drop in a multi channel merge and select the shading model principle BRDF. So the base would be, be the steel because the steel is underneath the paint. So you put it into the base using the output. And then the this one onto the over. Just like that. And just want to organize a bit. The note setup, and I'm gonna do a backdrop and call it the material blending. You also want to plug it into a. Usually, I would set up the material this way just to make sure that it works entirely. So in the shader section, click the sh add new shader and then choose principal BRDF and then probably add somewhere onto the canvas, which is right here. It's highlighted. Just drag it close to where you have your material blending. So this part is a little bit tricky because you have to ex you have to expand the multi-channel merge and just take the base to the base color and it'll auto connect the rest and now you can hide it just to declutter the note graph nice and clean As you can see, you don't, you're not seeing the edge wear right now because the mask is not plugged in. So let's start setting up the mask. Tab, type in curvature. So one important thing that you have to look out for is is the subdivision. So if you use subdivision one, the curvature won't be as nice because curvature, this curvature is dependent on geometry. So the more faces you have, the nicer the curvature will look. 
I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I step up to level 1, you can start seeing it to be more refined as I go higher on the subdivision level. I mean, the curvature is not perfect, but it's it's more of like an auxiliary map for achieving edgeware. So it's not the final map. So it's not too much of, of a problem. Also, I'll show you how to do the subdivisions. So basically, with your mesh that you brought in, and un under here, you'll see the subdivide. You can also access it under objects. Subdivide. And it'll bring up dialog box. And basically, this is the source geometry and then you add the geometry to the right side which you want subdivisions to happen and then this is where you set the levels of subdivision and pretty much I just use Camille Clark and just leave most of the settings basic and then just click subdivide and that's it. So jumping back onto the curvature, you'll need to also have a value adjust node. You pipe in the convexity, which is the protruding areas. Now you can start dialing in contrast to remove these areas that you don't really need the edgeware to be on. And also you want to adjust slightly the scale of the curvature. Just a tiny bit. Now you're just left with the, the hard edges. So next up, you want a before I forget, you need to drop a big point big point as well. settings I leave it at raw that's how I like it for these, these type of maps so pipe in the convexity to the bake point and then double click it to access the node properties and the output into the input of the value adjust so then you would want to for this step you'll need some kind of UVs for this because this is how it stores the nothing fancy just like a regular UV layout it's just to hold the information when you're caching the basically baking is caching the 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 the, the texture information to run the filters on. So just click bake. Wait for it for a bit. It shouldn't take too long for a simple asset like this. So when it turns green, it means it's baked. So after that, you can go on to the filters and then edit filters. You got a list of filters similar to adjustments that are similar to Photoshop. So you want either the blur or soften or the Gaussian. 
For this, I'll be just using the blur. And then just hit apply. Cool, right? It's just literally just... It's blurring. See how I can tweak this? I can even turn it on and off. So it's not as destructive as before. It saves you going back and forth from Substance Painter or Substance Designer and importing textures back into the Mari it's because all you all you really need is just the curvature node here. Okay, so moving on to the next step. You want a transition node. I'm going to drop down the contrast a bit so that I get a lot more gray values to, for transition to work. So pipe in the output of the value just into transition A. And then you want to bring up a axis projection. Or triplanar also works as well. But I prefer axis projection because it has more options. So double click the axis projection. Bring in a text grunge texture. In my image manager, I have a torn tile, which looks like this. It has a lot of jagged edges and lots of solid black and white because I want it to be a sharp break up on the, the edge wear. So yeah. With that, you just drop it onto the axis projection. And then pipe the output into this transition. And view it with one. As you can see, right off the bat, you already have some pretty cool breakup on the side of the edges already. Not side, the, what I mean is the border. You can even add jitter to the, the fallout. Sorry, I meant, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, actually, you want to adjust the contrast here. And I usually like to use either the multiply or, or the overlay option, which is over here. And then you want to also process it a bit if you want sharper edge wear by throwing another value adjust this you can tell how much i love using this because it's just so simple like really straightforward to use it has a contrast function also want to probably tweak the contrast a bit so I get more room to work with for the edge wear. Okay. 
you want some more additional breakup, you want to throw in another merge node by pressing M for the shortcut, or you can tab and create, type in M E R G. Then that's it. Well, let it auto save for a bit. Mari, auto save for a set amount of time as a backup in case you forgot to save and crashes so yeah uh, you can type in another axis objection throw in a different Add something different. A sec. I just want to add something different. Yeah, let's do a dirty paint. And let's throw it into the image. Let's view that by pressing 1. Just to see how it looks like. It's not too bad. I probably want to raise the scale, but bit then you can throw it in over top of the merge node view that right now you don't see anything happening but simply just switch over to the multiply node and already you can see it breaks up edge inside the edge as well it's got some nice breakup already so let's throw in a backdrop to organize it label stuff Labeling stuff is pretty important because if someone, some other artist picks up your project, they'll understand it better where things are. So just gonna name it Mass Edge Where without the T. And I like to throw in a. You don't have to use value adjust, but I just, for some reason, I really love using it. Like it's, it's got most of the features I need for a final pipe in into the mask. I'll show you why I like it. Cause like, basically you, you already, with this, you can have it controlling Out just like that see how it's expanding and contracting at the same time it's quite nice right so I'm just leave it at that and then now you can view output final output Ah, yes, I forgot. You need a... Because you want the paint to appear, right? So, and... So you need to invert the mask. Actually, yeah, I don't even need to... Let me see. Yeah, it's actually better to invert it here. Before the... Well, you can simply just cl click the node and then hover it over the line until it highlights yellow and it'll drop it in between and connect it automatically and now it should display it correctly as intended and voila 
you have your procedural edgeware. to be less thick. You can jump back onto the curvature and then reduce the scale. Uh, 0.22 and then you have to update the big point since you changed the, the curvature. Shouldn't take too long. If you have a decent PZ good specs yeah it's already updated so let's say you want to change your asset change your model to a different with new UVs or new additional modeling detail that you added Simply just go to your mesh. So I have a different where I added some extra detailing or to the mesh. So I just brought in, bring it in. Okay. Then go to objects, switch it to the new version. You see the edge is kind of not working or not work working meaning it's on the wrong areas because your UVs are different now but it's not a big deal just make sure you do the subdivisions on this one as well subdivide let it run long I think yep it's done and then simply just go to the bake point and update it like that see how the edgeware updated just like that Pretty good base, right? So if let's say the overall edge wear is too heavy, you want to make some changes to it. You can simply just throw in a merge node and a paint node and paint in manually. to do some corrections. Give me a sec. So, paint node. Paint option, choose color. I want to remove, so I'll be using black. thinking so let's choose a brush basic brush custom procedural hard surface brushes organic brushes sponge Paint it out. Ah, yes. Reversed. My bad.
Fake it. I have to set it up properly. Let me try to remember. Paint. Set to clear only. Now it should clear as soon as I bake. Pretty damn fast. Much faster than Mari 4.1. Or 4.5, to be honest. I mean, it is only one Uden, but it's still much, much more intuitive and free and fast. Just doesn't take you away from, doesn't make you wait too long. Okay, let, actually, let, let me double check. It look, it's looking a little low res because it's so close up, but but it should be fine for mid. So yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. Now you should have a good understanding of how to set up a procedural edgeware. If you're still unsure on certain parts or have questions for me, feel free to leave comments down below or contact me through my ArtStation page. Thanks for watching. Until next time.